New information about this mosque from a man who says he attended prayers there. We are protecting his identity at his request, and for the interview's purposes, we will call him Noor. Noor, thank you for being with us tonight. So you attended this mosque, the very same mosque where Alton uh, himself, Yisrael, uh, attended. And what did you observe? I observed the teachings of Islam. It took two years to learn what I know about Islam today. To the public, the mosque will not promote terrorism or any kind of radical acts. But when they're among friends and congregants only, they will promote the true teachings of Islam, which include the offer to non-Muslims, the choice rather, that you must convert, live under Islamic rule, or be fought against. Jihad fi sabilillah, jihad for the sake of Allah. So behind closed doors, you felt that the mosque was much more radicalized than they let on to the general public. Well, let me tell you what they say now. They have come out in response to this uh, beheading and condemned it. Uh, they say that uh, their hearts and prayers go out to the victims. And they have expressed uh, condemnation of his behavior and said he does not stand for Islam. They'll say that to any media presence. However, when I was attending the mosque, I was specifically told, for example, concerning suicide bombings in Israel, that we do support these acts because, as it was told to me, this is the only weapon the Palestinians have, but do not mention this to the media because they would not understand. I understand you had another incident where you were with two people from the mosque and there was a discussion about what they would do if Osama bin Laden himself showed up at their house. What happened? That's correct. I had two friends at the mosque. One of them is now an imam. His name was Yahya Graf, and the other one was named Jihad Rashad. Both of them at the time attended the Islamic Society of Greater Oklahoma City. Um, I'm unaware of where Yahya Graf is now. The last I heard, he was either in Houston or in Cairo, because I know that he, along with Soheib Webb, both studied at Al-Azhar University in Cairo. Both of the subjects, the men, told me that if Osama bin Laden came to their door, they would invite him in and protect him because he was a brother Muslim, and we must protect him from those that don't believe. They, did they ever discuss the subject of beheadings? Was that ever discussed? The only time that beheadings were discussed was in the means of which you confront the infidel as it is related to in the Quran that when you meet the unbelievers you should smite at their necks that was a, a quote that was actually also on this defendants Facebook page which we saw ourselves uh, now did they talk publicly I mean privately behind closed doors about the need to act differently in front of the media you made reference to that absolutely um, there's a teaching in Islam called taqiyya, which is deception. Muhammad, the prophet of Islam himself, even said that war is deception. And the reason that they are so deceptive is that when they cannot do jihad physically, they attempt to do jihad by means of stealth, by endearing themselves to the media, endearing themselves to government, endearing themselves to the American people to slowly work their way in. But they all believe in their religion, which teaches that, according to the Hadith in Sahih, in Sahih Muslim, that when you approach the non-believers, you must offer them a choice to convert, to live under Islamic rule and pay the jizya or poll tax and live in submission or you will be fought against, which is jihad fi sabilillah, which is what you see now with ISIS and Al-Qaeda and various other groups throughout the world. But, it, but clearly this can't be true of everyone who attends this mosque. I mean, they can't all be radical. Absolutely. Not everyone. As Ayan Hirsi Ali has said herself, a Muslim will choose how much of their religion they wish to practice. However, the people that told me, the person that told me, rather, about the concept of jihad and the choices that m must be offered to non-Muslims was Imam Suhaib Webb, who He's was the, the old imam. imam at this mosque? Yes, and he is now currently the imam of the Islamic Society of Boston. Which is where the Sarnayev brothers were going, the, the, the elder. 
That's correct. Okay, and, and he sounds like he is, this is him, this is a picture of him on the screen. Uh, he specifically was a teacher there to you, an imam there to you, and what, what, what specifically did he say? He is the one that told me to not talk to the media about suicide bombings in Palestine or Israel. And he is the one that first told me about the concept of jihad, the, the teaching that Islam allows three choices to be made to mm -hmm. non-Muslims and eventually they're all going to have to make that choice to convert to live under Islamic rule or die. I understand there was a time when you were invited to fire weapons north of Oklahoma City by uh, somebody you met at the mosque. What happened there? That's correct. The two individuals I was with were both fellow converts. Um, one of them was, uh, from what I'd been told, a Jewish convert to Islam named Suleiman. The other one was either in the military at the time or had just gotten out of the military and his name was Rashid. They invited me to go shoot weapons. Now I'm from Oklahoma, I have no issues with guns, so I just figured it would be a fun time with friends. However, when we got up there and we put out the targets, um, Suleiman said, well, this target is going to be George W. Bush, this target is going to be Ariel Sharon, and I don't remember what the other ones were, but they were famous people that were considered enemies to the faith. I know you left the mosque because you felt it was too radical, and you've been back from time to time in more recent years. When was the most recent time? The last time I was in the mosque was sometime in 20, 2011. And did you hear the same sort of discussions as you've been referencing? Absolutely. The reason I was back in there was at the request of law enforcement. I can't say any more than that. Really? However, um, I was in there and Imad Inchasi, who is now the current Imam, who was a friend of mine, he was preaching a sermon that the Israelis were trying to collapse Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem by digging tunnels underneath it. And at the end of the sermon, they prayed for the Mujahideen, the holy warriors in Palestine, um, Kashmir, and in Iraq, which, as we all know, who is being fought in Iraq by the Mujahideen, the United States. As I told the audience, we have been trying to get comment uh, on the record from this mosque. So far, we have been unsuccessful, but we will try again to get a response to Noor's comments tonight. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you.